Hey guys, hope you're well. Got a slightly different video for you tonight. In fact, it's going to be a short video series on how to build your own sim rig. Now, uh, that's something I've done quite recently, as you can see from this little bit of kit sticking out behind me. Um, and you might be wondering why you wouldn't just want to uh, buy one. There's perfectly good sim rigs out there, and there absolutely are. There's actually some really good value ones as well. Um, but because of the space I've got available to me, a very particularly shaped space, um, you know, there wasn't really an off the shelf solution that was gonna work for me. So I've kind of gone a long way around uh, uh, to design and build my own. And in this first video, we're, we're gonna focus on the design of the sim rig. In the second video, the build. And in the final kind of quick video, I'll do a little bit about um, what it's like to use and some of the other kind of bits attached to that. Um, so, as you might be able to tell, I have a door there uh, and my sim rig is currently blocking it. So I needed to uh, design something that could be compact, uh, could be made to go smaller um, and could actually fit under the desk in front of me here. So uh, quite a particular set of rules I needed to play by there. Um, required a lot of measuring, um, a lot of head scratching and chin scratching. Um, so what I'm going to do is run through the software that I use, which is called Frame Designer and all the considerations I kind of took. Um, and I'm going to show you a rig that I'm working on at the moment for one of the viewers of the stream who was interested in having, having one of their own uh, to fit their needs. Um, so let's get started. Let's fire up Frame Designer and have a quick look around. OK, so uh, this is the screen that greets you when you first download Frame Designer and install it. Uh, it's Windows only. It's completely free to use. Uh, the link's in the description. And if you're familiar with any kind of 3D software, say Maya, uh, 3D Studio Max, Cinema 4D, that kind of thing, the interface is going to be completely uh, you know, simple and straightforward to use for you. If you're not, don't worry. It doesn't take long to get to grips with it and I'll, I'll show you now. So what we're going to do, as you can see, I've got some recent projects that I've worked on down here, uh, but at the top you can choose between imperial and metric measurements for your design. Uh, I'm in the UK, so I'm a metric kind of guy. Uh, so here we are. Uh, now in the top left we have uh, a few little icons. The arrow is just for moving around and uh, sort of uh, using the interface. Uh, the next one along is for the extrusions. Now we're building with 8020 and a particular type of 8020. Um, so what we can do is uh, click on the little corner arrow there and it's going to throw up a list of all of the types of 8020 that are supported by this software. Now you don't need to worry um, if you yet don't know what you're buying. You know what we're kind of doing here is creating a blueprint for measurements and fit and finish. It doesn't matter if you're not selecting quite the right um, type of extrusion at this point uh, because we're not buying it from here. We're going to go somewhere else to get it. Um, as long as the, the measurements are correct, that's the really important thing. But the, for the sake of getting it right, what we're building with is um, the 4040 light here. Um, now there is a there is a standard edition of that, but if you can see there, the um, extrusions are a lot more solid. Uh, they're not hollowed out. Um, you don't need it to be that solid. It would be incredibly heavy, very industrial uh, usage. Um, it's complete overkill for building a rig. We want the slightly hollowed out, slightly lighter uh, 4040 light. And it is light. But it's incredibly rigid, uh, perfect for what we need. Um, now you can see there's different sizes down here as well. Um, so the 4040 is 40 mil by 40 mil. Um, and then we've got the 4080 uh, which is uh, one width of extrusion but two heights so 80 mil instead of 40 mil and then the other one we're going to use is the um, 8016 uh, which is three heights of um, the 40 by 40 uh, stuck together and we're actually going to use that for the wheel deck um, so what we're going to do is we'll start um, kind of just creating a basic frame 
learn the interface and then I'll jump over to a rig that I'm working on so that we can uh, kind of have a look at that. So if I click on the um, 40 by 80, we've got a little uh, kind of uh, extrusion that we can see here in 3D space. If I click and drag, I can create lengths and it's in centimeters. So um, what we'll do is we'll just build a basic shape uh, so we know what we're doing. So what I've done is I've just kept the mouse, uh, left mouse button held down. I've dragged it out 100, centimet uh, 100 centimeters a meter. I'm letting go and then I click again to set that in place. Um, now if we go back to our arrow icon up here, uh, obviously we don't want it to be that way up. We want to create a base for a rig. So we're going to want to spin it around. And if we click on the uh, extrusion, we get this um, orange surround, which lets us know it's selected. We can use these arrows to drag it around. and We can see how far we're moving it. Um, and we can go anywhere in 3D space with it. But actually what we want to do is we want to twist it. So if we right click on it and we go to rotate, we, we get these um, arrows here. And what we can do is uh, we can turn it on end. Um, we can um, spin it that way. And that's what we want to do here. We want to spin it around. Uh, we go back to our arrow uh, and we can place it somewhere in the world. It doesn't really matter where you put it in the world. Um, so there we go. We've got our first extrusion, but we're going to want to look around it. We're going to want to move around. We're going to want to add to it to start really building something. So to use the controls, uh, what we want to do is right click to be able to spin around. If you right click and hold and use the mouse and spin around up, down, you can go under it, over it, around it. Um, and if you click and hold the middle mouse button, you can actually drag around um, to get a better view and, and, and move around in space. And if you just use the, the mouse wheel itself to scroll and zoom in and out, it's very, very, very straightforward. The only, the only kind of thing where some people tend to go wrong when they first start using it, and I certainly did, is when you're using the right mouse button to rotate around what you're designing. If you click anywhere randomly in space, it will select that point to rotate around. Now we've lost our object, it's kind of gone. Um, so what we want to do is when we are rotating around, is we right click on the object that we want to rotate around and that way it keeps it in frame and it keeps it easy to use. We've got some other controls up here on the right as well that basically do the things that we want to do. We've got the pan tool, so you can click it and hold that down and you can pan around. Um, we've got the uh, aeroplane tool, which basically just gives you a tour. Um, and then we've got the uh, kind of zoom in and, and select tool there. But we've also got this box, so we can go to the left of the object and look at it straight on. We can go three quarter view uh, and lose it completely. <laughs> we've lost it where's it gone there we go we're back um that's one thing i will say actually about frame designer as great as it is as it is and the fact that it's free is awesome uh it's a little bit it's a little bit buggy and it's a little bit it's got a little bit of a mind of its own uh, so save often save often because it does occasionally crash um <laughs> just a warning right okay so we've got our first extrusion we know roughly what we're doing with it um so let's, um, let's add to it. We go back to our extrusion tool uh, and it will actually select whatever you were working with last. Uh, and when you hover your mouse over uh, something you've already created, it gives you some really useful measurements and it will stick to it like glue. It will give you the option of where you want to, uh, you know, where you want to build to it. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna pull out an extrusion from the end. Um, you know, I'm just doing a random shape really at the moment. So we've let go in the mouse button and we've clicked to confirm that's what we want. And then we're going to pivot around it uh, and pan around. And then we're going to go and we know that we want it to be 96 centimeters long because we've, we're extruding from the end um, of an existing uh, piece of aluminium, um, which we know is 40 mil. So nice, uh, 96 plus four is 100. And then we're coming in again here. So we've got this lovely shape, very, very basic shape. This could be the framework for your rig. 
um, you know, it wouldn't be because the measurements aren't right, we're just randomly creating at the moment. But what we can do now is obviously we've got it, but if we laid this out on the floor, it would just fall over, it wouldn't be any use. We need to actually, you know, uh, attach them together. And to do that, we use uh, gussets, which is, which is cool. And you can find that in the slot accessories area. So we'll pop that up and you can see we've got all kinds of things. We've got corner brackets, we've got gussets, we've got plates, uh, and we've got handles and hinges and all kinds of things. We just want the gussets. Now, again, there's a wide range of these. And again, it doesn't really hugely matter, um, you know, which one you use here, because what you're going to buy is, you know, uh, potentially slightly different. Uh, but for the sake of completeness, we'll pick what's essentially the right thing, which in this case is the uh, 36 by 76, because we're using uh, 40 by 80 to do the frame. We want something slightly bigger than a basic gusset just to give it that bit more support. Um, so if I select that and move it around, you can see it's basically a right angle joint. And it has, we zoom in a bit, a couple of holes in each side. Uh, screws are going to go through those holes. Um, you have a receiving piece that slots into the 8020 to receive the screw and you tighten it up. And that's going to hold, um, you know, those two uh, pieces of extrusion together really really firmly really tightly they're not going anywhere um, so you can put them anywhere you like uh, you just click it into place and there it is and we can just go around and add those to our uh, design so we're going to want one oh, in there and we're going to want one in there and we're going to want one in there you don't need to double up on these. These are, you know, super strong. They're also expensive. So really when you're designing your own sim rig, you do really want to think about minimizing the amount of metal that you're putting in it. Um, now you might notice that one of them didn't fit very well. Um, it's sunk in. So if we highlight it with the arrow, you can just use your arrow keys to move it around, or you can use the, um, arrows on the screen to, to move it around as well. Uh, and when you're placing them, you may find, again, if I go back to the extrusion tool, it will select the last, last thing we had. So we'll go back to accessories, choose our gusset again. Um, you can use the G key to rotate them. The software doesn't always place them particularly well. Um, so always remember you've got the G key to help you there. So now we know for our basic frame, this is not going anywhere. It's absolutely solid as a rock. Um, we know what extrusion lengths we need. Um, we can see this information by clicking on the um, info tab that's in the widgets bar. And we've got a properties thing that pops up here. So we're using 40 by 80. It's 96 centimeters long. We can add comments to it. Um, you know, we can change the color of it. Uh, we can actually change the length. We can just type in what length we want and it will uh, change the length as we can see there. Control Z to uh, undo the last action. But again, it's a little bit, a little bit flaky. So we, uh, we have to take that into account. Um, uh, so yeah, we've got this really solid box. It works a treat. This is our frame. Now, one of the really great things uh, about the software is you can group stuff together. So we've made our frame. We're not gonna wanna ever change that now. It's done. What we can do is drag the left mouse button, highlight everything within the shot there. If we go up to edit, there's a group option. Let's group it together. Let's call it the um, frame, click okay. Now, what will happen now is that when we click away and do something else over here, we can come back to it, click the frame, everything is selected and it behaves like just one single unit, which is really useful if you think when you come to say building the wheel deck and you want to move it forwards and backwards, instead of selecting each individual item every time and holding the control key to select them all, uh, you can just group it and then you can do what you want with it and that's great. 
So that's the real, real basics of how Frame Designer works and how you create extrusions to build your frame, um, see the measurements uh, and work with it. There's, there's, there's more to it, but it's, it's, it's really quite intuitive and quite straightforward. So let's move on now to uh, a rig that I'm working on for one of the stream viewers. Hopefully you won't mind me name checking him, Rob. Um, you know, w once I built my rig, uh, he was really interested to see if there was something that could work for him. And when you design and build it yourself, it's actually quite a bit cheaper than doing it, um, you know, buying off the shelf. Uh, and you can have exactly what, what you want and where you want it. Um, so I'm helping Rob with his rig. Let's check it out now and run through some of the other cool features. Cool. All right, so here we are with the sim rig I'm working at the moment for Rob. Um, as you can see, it's essentially complete. Um, we've got uh, the frame, uh, we've got um, the seat area, um, and we've got a wheel deck area, uh, sorry, a uh, pedal deck area, and we've got our wheel deck. So, what we want to do, ignoring that stuff in the background for now, is just have a look, have a little look around. We've got all our Kind of joints and things that we need everything has a connector that needs a connector so at the moment we know how many connectors we need ultimately how many screws we're going to need um, we know all the lengths uh, of all our extrusions and how many of each we're going to need uh, the software does output that in a document for you with an exploded diagram and things like that which actually is really useful when you come to building the rig um, but we'll, we'll come to that a little bit later now, one of the things that really kind of got me when I first started designing mine for the very first time, and bearing in mind, it went through quite a lot of iterations to get to where, you know, I wanted it to be. It's the considerations of like, well, how long does it need to be? And how wide? And um, how much room do I need between the wheel deck and, uh, you know, the seat area and that kind of thing. And as long as the outer frame is essentially the right kind of dimensions, those other considerations can actually come at the build stage as long as you've got your outer dimensions um, so height uh, width uh, uh, and length kind of nailed down all the other things don't really matter quite as much because the half of the point of building your own rig with 8020 is the fact that it's so incredibly modular uh, and you can actually move things while you're building it. In fact, you're going to want to do that while you're building it to adjust it so everything feels right. So you've got the wheel positioned exactly where you want it. Um, as long as you've got the room to maneuver, um, you know, the actual height of this, this deck actually doesn't really matter at this stage. Um, so uh, what length did I go for? Well, knowing Rob, I happen to know that he's six foot tall. He's a bit taller than me. Um, so I did a little bit of research on the internet to see what's a relatively standard length for a rig. Um, and I happen to know that they tend to be between kind of uh, 1.2 and 1.3 meters. Um, so I elected for 130 on the outside length. Um, having done some research on wheel decks, I know that quite a standard width for a wheel for an entire wheel depth is 600 mil, so 60 centimeters. So, for example, if Rob at some stage wanted to upgrade his wheel and uh, go to a direct drive wheel, he could go to somewhere like Sim Labs or a, or, or a competing company and buy a direct drive. Um, holder um, so he can screw in his his fancy wheel quite easily and he can rest assured that it will fit on this rig because the outer dimensions are 600 mil which is the standard width for those kind of um, you know uh, pieces of um, metal work so so that's what we did we went for 130 and we went for 600 or the width uh, so in that case the the actual um, extrusions per width 
our 52 because we've got to take into account we've got 40 mil on each side and um, uh, you know so just sort of basic maths to consider that um, now my seat deck needed to be really low uh, I basically sit on the floor uh, almost on my I'm 40 mil clearance on the floor from the from the bottom of the seat um, for Rob the height actually isn't an issue for him it's not the height that's the problem so we've gone for a pretty standard uh, design which is to have a cross beam obviously the same height as your outer frame uh, and then to have some 40 to 40 by 40 lengths running the length of that and as you can see we've got gussets in here at each end to hold it in nice and firmly and what we've done is we've checked what length um, we need for our the framework for the seat um, so we know what that length is and it's easy to find you go to anywhere that sells um, bucket seats and side mountings we're using side mountings for, for this rig uh, for Rob's case just really to give him a little bit more height um, and also they look great um, so what we've done is we've made uh, we, we've uh, gone on the internet we found okay uh, so uh, side mounts for bucket seats are tend to be yay long um, we've made uh, these lengths slightly longer than that uh, so he's got m room to maneuver forwards and backs to find his perfect seating position because uh, everything's so modular it's just makes sense to do it that way and then when we come down the other end to the pedal deck now pedals are very difficult to get in the right position you need to be able to have lots and lots of room for maneuver um, so what we've elected to do down this end is we've got two short uh, vertical extrusions and then we've kind of got this A-frame here uh, with a cross section now I know what pedals Rob uses um, and they're very similar to mine he's got the uh, Fanatec V3 pedals so we've got two widths here that, that, that can be placed at the right height to screw in the uh, front and rear um, connectors for the pedals to, to um, kind of mate with the deck. Um, so they're going to connect here and here. And what we've done is we've created lengths um, for the deck uh, that sit just inside um, the framework for the rig itself. And what we're going to use is we're going to use the special um, connectors that you can use that are levers and they mate two right angles here um, uh, and they can do it um, at any angle that you choose so um, you can uh, pivot and move these around so that they're at any um, height up or down but also any angle that, that works for you and it's a very similar system to the one that I use on my rig I know it works really really well you have four of them uh, one in each corner so we would move this length down we were connected either here or here um, screw it up really tight using the lever um, you know get these two tight where we want them and then we'll move um, the, the, the back of the pedal deck up and then uh, use the levers again on these corners uh, here to be able to um, screw those down really tight so we've got a really really rigid pedal deck but we've got it at any angle at any height that we want it so if we're if we were driving like we wanted to drive like a proper gt3 driver um, whose pedal decks are actually quite high they tend to be almost the same height as the bottom of the seat uh, we can totally do that um, and still give it some angle if we want to do an f1 style we could completely do that we might want to i mean i know that rob doesn't want to do f1 style but we, we can make these a little bit longer and have them even higher and tilted up and make sure that we've got our seat deck is also tilted and we we put the seat on on the the furthest tilt that you can on the side mounts uh, you could create an f1 position really quite easily uh, and everything in between uh, like i say i mean the whole point of this 8020 system is it's completely modular it's completely open to um you know adjustment at every every single stage even down to the arm here that i've got for 
um, his mouse pad to connect to and also his keyboard if he wants to. Um, it's, it's actually like a really subjective thing. You know, I actually like to have my mouse quite low, but Rob may not want that. So what I've done is I've created a, a, a kind of connection here where there is room for say the upright here to be much higher. So therefore we can move this higher. And in fact, if we wanted to go higher still, we could take the cross beam all the way up to the top, move it across here. Um, you notice it's gone red. And the reason it's gone red here, because we're intersecting. Um, so we'll move that up. And when you zoom in, uh, the more you zoom in, the more um, fine grain the movements are, but you can also just use the arrows to move things as well. Actually, we've got a, um, we've got, we've got an end cap on there. And when they connect, they go blue on one of the edges. So we know we've got a really good connector there. So now that we've put this on top, we've got a further 40 mil clearance. So we can have that pretty darn high. Um, and then anything in between. So Rob can just go and actually just do, you know, uh, connect it how he wants. So it's the, it's the perfect height for him. Uh, and the same with the wheel deck. Obviously, if we select everything on the wheel deck, um, we can group it and move the whole thing around. So the wheel deck can go anywhere. Oh, I've actually <laughs> selected that there as well. So if I hold control and then re-click that, it'll unselect it. So we can now move the wheel deck anywhere we want. Uh, forwards and back obviously um, and then while we're doing the design we can be kind of sure that the uh, everything sort of fits together you know w w there's no way we're going to want the wheel deck all the way back here um, just because you wouldn't be able to use the pedals but we can we can just check and confirm we're not going to have we're not going to run into any problems um, along the way so one other thing you might see, so I think that that kind of runs down, you know, the considerations. Um, but one other thing that will really help you, and I've got a small demonstration of that here, um, is that you can create anything you want to use to help you understand, uh, you know, its actual dimensions and whether something's going to work. So Rob's having a uh, screen attached to his rig. So I've I've built a uh, a really basic frame for it. Uh, and let's just get it in place so we can see it properly. Um, here we go. So I've coloured it differently and I've grouped it so that we know that it's in the right place. Um, it has two vertical bars. It has a cross beam. Uh, it has lots of connectors to keep it nice and rigid. Lots of gussets. Uh, and we're using this plate as a sort of uh, simile for a, for a visa mount uh, so that we can connect his monitor. But obviously to get this right and to know that it's going to work and be confident that the dimensions are right, even when the wheel deck's slightly further back or slightly further forward from what was, is essentially the right place. And it's normally about the wheel deck you tend to find is about two thirds of the way down the rig, give or take which is essentially what we've got here. Um, so we've got this in, but is his monitor gonna work? I, I wasn't sure. So I asked Rob for the dimensions of his monitor um, and to get an understanding where the visa mount is on his screen as well. And this uh, um, kind of crazy looking box here is the represents his monitor and actually the, the extreme outer dimensions of it it's actually a slightly curved monitor um, so what we can do is know that uh, for example uh, let's move this where it's meant to be which is essentially around about there um, so we can know that a it's going to fit uh, and b we're going to be able to position it in a way where uh, the screen's well positioned for using a sim rig. So what you want to do with your screen placement is ensure that the middle of the screen is at eye level, which is normally where the horizon will ultimately be when you're, when you're sim racing. As I said, his visa mount for a screen is actually 
quite low on the screen, um, which is fairly unusual for a Visa mount, uh, from my experience anyway. So, um, you know, we need to test it and make sure that actually, yes, it's going to work. It's going to be in the right place. Um, so that's what I've done here. Oops. See, this is me playing with the controls again, not clicking in the right place. There we go. We're back. Um, always click on something when you want to pivot around. <laughs> I still make that mistake now. So we've got our screen, our kind of faux screen connected. Uh, and in position, we know we've got clearance for his wheel deck. I know what um, wheel base he uses. He uses the same as mine, which is a Fanatec um, V2.5 uh, Club Sport. <clears throat> so it's quite a shallow wheel, um, you know, base unit. So we can see that we, we, we've actually got a really good position. By the time the... Um, the, the the wheel is connected we're going to be covering slightly the bottom of the screen and that's fine but what we need to make sure is that there's plenty of scope for Rob to be able to say actually I want it higher I want it lower I want it closer I want it further away so we've made sure this frame is tall enough that there's room for the cross beam to maneuver up and down but also not too tall that it's going to stand proud at the top of the monitor look ugly and 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 kind of not be not be nice to use so there we go i also did the same with that with my seat when i when i was choosing a seat i thought okay i'm going to create a kind of rough approximation of the outer dimensions of the seat place it on my uh, rig and ensure that um i can get the wheel deck in the right position so i measured from the back of my seat my normal driving seating position I measured from the back of the seat to the front of the wheel and I measured from the back of the seat to the front of the pedals so that I could position things and know that actually yes I'm going to fit in this rig and yes I'm going to be able to create a seating position that's comfortable for me you know for what I want to do so I highly recommend to do that kind of thing just to be doubly sure you know that you're measuring twice and only cutting once uh, and getting things absolutely bang on so I hope that kind of design process is, is helpful for you uh, and helps you to uh, build a rig that can you know really work for you uh, the next part of the puzzle is actually outputting what we've created here in a way we, we can go to somewhere that sells 80 20 extru extrusions and buy exactly what we need uh, and get them delivered so we can get cracking with the build um, so let's look at that next all right then guys, so we've reached the point where we finalised our design. Um, we're ready to order some stuff and we want to get building. What we want to do is one final bit in Frame Designer, which is to output what we've got. Um, and we can then uh, sort of use that to help us make our purchasing choices and get what we need. So what we're going to do is remove anything that we don't need. So just hit the delete key to get rid of you know anything that's extra all we've got left to do is to make sure that we've got end caps where we want end caps because we're going to want to buy them to keep keep it looking nice and tidy we've got an option down here cover caps if you highlight everything and just hit cover caps it'll put uh, cover caps on everything uh, that hasn't got one that can have one um, so now we are ready to output that and we'll, what we'll do is um, over here we've got like a price guide thing that's essentially meaningless we're not buying it from this this company uh, we're going to go to get bill of materials click that what that's going to do is output a nice pdf document for us that has a um, exploded view of everything that we're building and it also has a great bill of materials um, that sort of lists everything that we've got um, on our rig so this is good news what we're going to do is uh, save it out um, as uh, rig one save that it will create the document um, I've actually got one uh, already up here um, so this um, has all like I say it's got the bill of materials here uh, we've got an isometric view we've got a multi view so we can get a really good look at it with measurements then we've got an exploded view um, 
with a key where we can go back up to our bill of materials and then we've got all the, the key tags here um so as we can see um we've got one piece of 40 40 light at 300 mil we have got another piece at 650 we've got two pieces at 200 and so on we go down through here um and we can um use this as a reference for what we're buying it's also got things like the end caps that we need um it's got the corner brackets you know the gussets um and it's actually got a whole bunch of other stuff on here that we don't need so it's got a whole bunch of anchoring material that we're not going to use um it's got service prices here for costs of cutting lengths we're just ignoring that all we need is the actual components that we want which is effectively the end caps the um obviously extrusions themselves and also the the brackets and what we want really is just the number okay so we've got uh 24 standard kind of uh gussets um and we've got four uh of the larger end caps there for example so we've got all of that information that's really great we're going to save that document keep that safe and now we're gonna go across and we're gonna look to uh, buy all this stuff in, in one place and, and make a convenient purchase and, and get that stuff delivered now i've been uh, using a particular website called uh, i think it's uh, Matadus. not sure how to pronounce it uh, but these uh, this place is is great from experience for uh, buying and delivering to the uk and europe i believe they're a, a german-based company so if you're in Europe, that's great for you. If you're in the US or elsewhere, um, just have a, a Google for um, uh, 8020 um, aluminium extruded profile um, and find a company that, that, that supplies this kind of stuff. Um, so all I'm doing is I'm going to slot profiles um and we need a uh, we're looking for a particular type which is like the type we used in frame designer and in this case it's called profile 40 i type plot 8 um and here we have much like in the software a whole selection of different types of profile 40 um the basic type is the 40 40 i type slot 8 uh so the 40 mil by 40 mil and then we've got the 40 by 80, which we used um, as the frame for our rig. Uh, and then we've also got the 40 by 160, which we also used to create the um, wheel deck. Um, so all we have to do is refer to our construction document. So we want one at 300. We go back here, we go to the 40, 40. Uh, and then you can see that there's lots of different buying options here um, so you can have it cut to any length you want so for example I could just say okay we need one at 300 mil um, and I can add that to the cart but there are slightly more cost-effective ways of doing it It doesn't make a huge huge difference to price but it makes enough of a difference to make it worth the trouble uh, what you can do is you can cut a complete bar. They will machine this complete bar for you and it works out a little bit cheaper than just them delivering you individual cuts. Um, so you could cut it from a bar that's just under two meters long or you can cut it from a bar that's six meters long. If you're building a big rig and you've got lots of small cuts, what you would do is you would say, okay, I've got one cut of 300. Add that. It takes a chunk out of that for you. Uh, and then you've got two bars at 450 add that for you and you go on and on and on and what you will hopefully end up with um, you know you might do this a couple of times on the 19 by 60 or uh, you might just do it all out of a six meter piece um, what you'll do is you'll fill that up so you've used up the, almost that entire bar and there might be a little bit left at the end which they'll send to you and that's your um, a paperweight or whatever <laughs> uh, in future so it actually works out that those cuts per meter are about in my case sort of 60 uh, 50 60 pence cheaper per meter so um, 
doesn't make a huge difference but enough of a difference to make it worth worthwhile doing they also sell standard lengths which are cheaper again so if you get the opportunity you might say actually i've got one that's 400 mil it doesn't matter if i get it to 415 um it's going to be cheaper for me to buy it as a 415 same with if you've got some of this 490 it doesn't matter if it's 500 you could order it as a 500 you could tweak your design just to see whether it would work um and then if you can get these standard lengths then it's going to save you some money right the other option if you're handy you've got a workshop or you're not afraid of your tools you can actually just buy the raw um you know um uh, lengths and then cut them uh, machine them yourselves cut them down yourselves and you're going to save quite a considerable amount you're saving well over uh, a pound per meter if you can machine it yourself so those are some strong options so what you can do is you can work your way through those profiles add them to your cart uh, and then you're going to want your accessories so on the left hand panel here we're going to go down to plot profile accessories um, you have got obviously connectors uh, basic connectors which is what we want this all looks really quite confusing but it's really it really isn't we want the eye type we want the slot eight and we want some basic gussets right so we we needed i can't remember what it was we needed 24 of these i think um obviously i'd refer to what we need turns out they're sold out which is unfortunate but let's um let's uh, you know assuming they're going to be back in stock really quickly it's a very popular item um you can buy them in individual units that's no good um we want to buy a bag of them they come in bags of 10 let's get three bags because actually we're probably going to want some more leftover we might at some point want to add a keyboard tray or you know uh, some kind of other accessory uh, they're handy to have extra you can buy just the brackets on their own or you can also elect to buy them with a fastening set so it will come with the correct screws it will come with the correct connectors for your um for the slot and you can even buy it also even with the cover caps and that's actually what I did works out a little bit cheaper it's convenient you know it's going to work so elect to add it to cart with the cover caps three bags that's done um, and then we go back to our uh, connectors and we can see that um, what we're we looking at here oh no I've gone too far oh no here we go um, so for our frame we had slightly larger gussets you remember and what we want is the 40 by 80 i type slot slot 8 so we've got these here again you can buy it with the fastening set you can buy it with the fastening set and the cover caps um, and you can buy them in bags or individual units again uh, i think we only needed four of these um, so it would be cheaper to buy uh, individual units of those uh, but if you need eight or something like that it might work out cheaper for you to buy a bag of 10 than it would to buy eight individual so I'll leave that to you to kind of work out what's most cost effective and what works best for you. Um, as you'll see, there are a whole host of other bits and bobs, but those are the raw kind of uh, materials that you will need to, um, you know, build your rig. Uh, you'll find there's lots of other stuff you can also buy from here. There, uh, you could buy, uh, for example, the visa mount that we're going to use for the monitor stand on rob's rig um they sell those here uh, they're machined you can spend a little bit more get it black anodized version unfortunately they don't do the plot profiles themselves they don't do the treated profiles as black anodized it is a lot more expensive to do that but the finish is fantastic it looks lovely um so there's lots and lots of other accessories lots of bits and bobs you could buy a cup holder that screws into your 8020 uh, which is obviously essential is probably the most uh, most essential thing you can buy mouse pads that slot in as well and that kind of thing so you see so you can get basically everything you could possibly possibly need uh, even things like um colored strips that slot in to the spare unused slots to uh give your rig a bit of a aesthetic or whatever um recommend doing that they're not terribly expensive but the postage gets quite expensive because they're they're delivered in like two meter lengths 
So there's like a postage tax attached to doing that. Um, so that pretty much covers the basics. Once you've filled your cart, you just uh, do the buying process and hopefully within a week you will receive a beautiful collection of aluminium profiles and accessories to go with it. So one of the things I almost forgot to mention was actually the angle clamp uh, locking levers. Um, now uh, I'm, I mentioned these about using them on the uh, pedal deck to be able to angle the extrusions to be able to get the pedals at exactly the right angle that you want to use them. Um, and that's where these fellas come in handy. Uh, they slot into one side of the profile and then on the opposite edge of the profile um, it slots in. You have one screw going through the middle uh, with a, a lever attached and that lever, if you pull it out, it will spin freely. If you push it in, it actually works as a, a locking mechanism um, so that uh, on one edge it's fixed, on the other edge you can tilt and move. Um, super easy to use, um, quite simple to fit. Um, you can use that to, like I say, be able to change the angle of your um, pedal deck. Um, these ones, um, you can't use them on the wheel deck. You need one slightly different. Uh, it, there's another variant of this that comes without the crossbar that locks it into the opposing bar. Um, so it's just flat on both edges and that way it lets it tilt the other way as opposed to tilting this way. It can tilt forwards and back um, so I actually use those uh, the, the ones we've got on screen here I use for um, my um, pedal deck and the other type I use on my wheel deck to be able to tilt that um, and they're super easy to use they come with a um, sort of a little instruction video that that runs you through um, how they're used and as you can see these get rid of these damn adverts he's uh, sort of demonstrating way they go together there on the video super straightforward um, and they work a treat highly recommended they're not the cheapest accessories in the world but they are brilliant for the solution we need and if you have any worries that they don't hold it firmly enough don't worry they really are rock solid um, I use four on my pedal deck and you get them tight they are going nowhere uh, it works a treat um, so, and in my case, actually, it works really well because when I retract my pedal set, it, it shortens the rig so that I can tidy it away, get access to that door so we can go into the garage, uh, and it fits really, really well. Um, so yeah, um, almost forgot about that. So once we're all done with that, we can complete the order, get it all delivered, uh, and we are ready to start building our rig. Now we'll come to that in part two of this short series on building your own rig. Um, if you found this video useful, I feel like I've rambled for ages, so I'm sorry if it was really boring, but if it was useful to you, please do consider dropping a subscription on the channel, um, giving that video a like, and it really helps share it to other people that might find it interesting or useful. Um, otherwise, guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you on the track. Take care for now, cheers.